Brendan, thanks for joining us, mate. It's been a, a very solid last month for you, but you've got a few fans out there there in Trackside World. Yeah, good day, Mick. How are you, mate? I'm, I'm, I'm good. Just a quick question for you, uh, BH. If we do have a Hall of Fame and we pitch you a photograph up in the green room for the Hall of Fame, do you want the photograph with the mullet or without the mullet? <laughs> oh, I'll let the fans decide, mate. Either way, either one wouldn't uh, worry me too much, to be fair. OK, we'll have a poll online. I'm just simply optimistic, <laughs> uh, not racing today in Sydney. So what's the story there? Oh, look, he just, he just wasn't 100% during the week and, um, you know, I just didn't want to uh, risk running them on a... Uh, it's gonna, the track's going to be a bit worse than what it was the other day when he ran and um, obviously the race is late in the day and, um, yeah, I just don't want to take any risks risks at this stage and, um, you know, just happy to, to wait until he's 100% and um, which, he, which he will be in a week or so, but uh, that's where we are there, you know. Now we've seen you able to have those hit-and-run missions on Sydney. You must have been very interested this week. The announcement's coming out of Racing New South Wales, a whole lot of money going into country racing and $200,000 cups and, and those sort of things, Brendan. Is that what trainers here have to start thinking about to maybe have those two or three race hit-and-run missions to try and get those big stakes? Oh, look, without a doubt, you know, it's... Um I suppose the hardest thing is is just to try and find the horses good enough to um, to be able to bring here. You know, it's uh, it's been 15 or 16 years, I suppose, since I started training, and um, you know, uh, he's sort of been the only one I thought was good enough to sort of bring back and be competitive in these sort of races. And um, you know, they're very hard to come by. Obviously, uh, you know, a lot of the better stock gets sold over to Singapore and Hong Kong and places like that before they even get to the races. So, um, you know, without doubt, it's. Uh, it's, 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 it's right thing to try and be doing, but obviously you've got to have the right horse too. Let's head to Tarapa today, where last time you tipped us that big prize winner. It's been backed in the last race on the card. Mr Scallywag is your chance. In the second on the card, and Brendan, not very often you tip a horse who actually draws barrier 22. It comes all the way into 15. Look, he's a mark fee. You would think he's going to plough through the mud, and he was good enough here two starts ago. Yeah. You know, look, I think... Um, he ran second there a couple of starts ago and um, the track was just too heavy for him last time at Waipa. So um, back to 1,600, I don't, don't think it'll be an issue. And um, he'll, he'll he'll go forward from that wide barrier draw. And uh, obviously, you know, Tarapas is sort of horses for courses these days. And, um, yeah, hey, look, he's, um, he's, he's, he's certainly an each-way chance if he can sort of run up to what he did two starts back, you know. Is that a key factor as we watch that last start, or two starts ago performance, to be able to go forward at Tarapa with the potential for a kickback and, and therefore the fact that you're not going to have that coming back in your face, that sand? Oh, look, I think without a doubt, you know, um, it, it's a big advantage uh, to be sort of up there on the pace. Um, you know, I think the rail's only out four metres or something, so uh, it'll be interesting to see just how wide they get late in the day, but certainly race two. I wouldn't think that they're going to be scouting too wide, and if you can get a handy position, it's going to be a big advantage for you, you know. You've also got Rock and Style on the same race, uh, still on the improve? Yeah, you know, look, he, um, he didn't handle the track um, last start as well as what we'd like, you know, and um, he's still learning his trade, but uh, everyone that sort of uh, hopped on him um, said he's got the feel of uh, that he won't make the grade, you know, so he's just a very slow, immature horse, but um, certainly like to see a bit more improvement today, and... Um, He's going to be better again with six months under his belt. So, The sixth on the card, Brendan, is the first leg of our $200,000 Terminating Turbo Pick 6. And the money has once again gone on Money Trail. Opened at $23 into 10. Uh, the three kilo claim for Chelsea Burden will help. But you are up against a horse who looks a pretty serious horse in Helena, baby. Yeah. You know, look, it's, um, it might be the biggest field, but certainly, um, you know, there's some good gallopers in there and uh, certainly some nice horses in form. Um, but, yeah, look, the horse is, he's as well as what he was last start and, you know, he's not carrying anywhere near his weight as what he was then, but obviously he jumps a couple of grades and, uh, like you just said, um, you know, some really nice form horses in the race, but um, you know, the horse runs well at Tarapa and uh, obviously not as confident today is what we were last start for obvious reasons but um, you know there's no reason why the horse shouldn't run a nice race Can you beat Helena Baby or for pick six punters is it worth a small ticket on your horse or if you were taking a pick six would you be anchoring Helena Baby? Oh no look I mean you know it looks like a very smart, smart galloper you know um, John Bell's horse and uh, 
I wouldn't put my sort of neck out as far to say that, you know, um, we'd beat it. Um, but, you know, all we can do is turn up the good, healthy horse, which we will, and, um, you know, hopefully we can run well. But um, I certainly wouldn't be saying that we can beat it, that's for sure. Do we include so much more in the last Tarapa League of the Pick 6, the 8th on the card? Yeah, yeah, for sure. He um, two of his um, three runs back uh, this prep, um, just been on real sicky tracks. Taranaki uh, first up and then again last start at Taronga. Um, you know, he likes it a bit looser, which it was at Ellerslie two starts back where he ran very well. And um, and he's been a winner at Tarapa in the past too. So um, the horse has been going pretty good for some time, but obviously on paper, you know, the form sort of probably doesn't suggest that. But... Um, Hopefully, Barrier One's the right the right place um, that time of the day, and Sprack gets on pretty good with the horse. So once again, he's fitting well. He's been a winner on the course, and um, you expect him to run well. Mate, uh, things are going well. How many horses in the barn, and is there room for another one? If someone's sort of thinking to themselves, I've got one to bring back into work for the spring, and Brendan Horton could yeah, be my man. Any room there? Yeah, there's always room, mate. No worries about that. But. Um, uh, obviously, this time of year, you know, your numbers are down a bit. We're sort of working about 25 between Cambridge and uh, and, and Tiamutu, but, um, you know, look, always going for more, that's for sure. Thanks, mate. We appreciate your time this morning. Good luck. We're looking forward to seeing Simply Optimistic back in Sydney and send us uh, through that best photo you can for our Hall of Fame for the Punters Lounge. That's Brendan Horton.